Hello everybody, how are you all doing? I'm glad to be back here with you and today I'm going to introduce you to Brownie. This little guy is a guinea pig and I call him the Explorer 2. The reason is because when we received it in, in our home uh, he loves to explore everything around. Since I have the Rolex Explorer, I call this the Explorer 2. But it is no secret that I have always liked the Rolex Explorer 2 and all the Explorer type of watches and those with fixed bezels especially. So the Explorer 2 embraces one of the qualities of uh, exploring and field watches that, that I really uh, enjoy and like. And today I'm going to talk about the Nesumi Aviera. I'm going to leave this guy here in on the floor and well, this is the Aviera, the watch that I am uh, talking about. And as you see, it's a fixed bezel watch with a very interesting design. And we are going to make a review about it. Um, by the way, I am wearing the Trasca Semitier which I'm uh, on a tropical uh, gray strap that I received yesterday from AliExpress and I'm wearing this watch a lot. I love this 36 millimeter size. And well, let's go and talk about this watch. As some channel followers pointed out, you could tell during the unboxing that I wasn't so thrilled, and that was indeed the case. I think the first thing that negatively caught my attention was the bracelet. I had heard in some prototypes reviews that the bracelet was rather basic, and although I was prepared, you know, like when you're told a movie is bad, you brace yourself, then watch it and it's not that bad. But no, having low expectations, I hoped it wouldn't seem so basic, but yes, it was exactly what I had imagined. But I'll touch on the negatives later. I also knew that the watch was thick, at 13.6mm high. Being used to watches around 12mm the most or less, like the Trasca Sametir at 10.6mm, I had my doubts. When I first picked it up, I really could tell the, the height of, of the watch. But those were first impressions, and you cannot have a real, true understanding of a watch, or anything for that matter. You need to experience the watch in different situations, in a day-to-day -day environment, in different places. So you need to have more experience with, with the watch before making a judgment, a true judgment. Whether or not I would keep it, or if I would sell to buy the black Christopher Ward C63 cylinder, depended on that experience. Some tough competition there. How is it living with the Nesumi Aviera? Comparisons are inevitable. Having different watches with GMT functionality and having tested another with a fixed bezel, similar to Rolex Explorer 2, helps to better understand not just this watch, but also this Christopher Ward as well. I hope my experience will help. The Aviera is a genuine adventure watch with a distinct spirit. It's a tool watch in design and finish. It's neither sleek nor particularly elegant. It makes no concessions and doesn't apologize for its nature. Can I wear it to a formal dinner? Well, technically yes, but it's not where it would fit the best. On the other hand, the cylinder is initially an elegant, refined and well-finished watch with GMT functionality. Can you use it for adventures? Sure. But even though it's not out of place in that setting, it feels, you know, slightly more sophisticated, perhaps more civilized. In this regard, it's more reminiscent of a Grand Seiko GMT than the Explorer 2. Likely, the cylinder was designed as a more versatile watch, primarily elegant, but also capable of adventure 
as that would be its most common use today. So the cylinder was designed more to be a versatile, elegant watch you can use for almost anything with uh, some occasional adventures. But the Aviera screams adventure in every fraction of its design, no matter where you go or where you are. So although at the beginning it might look a little bit tall, it's not that much. It's very well proportioned, so you get used to it very quickly. But let's talk about design. This watch was the first designed by David Campo from Nesumi Studios. But back then, there wasn't an affordable GMT movement available. Keep in mind, David Campo is a designer who has a big passion for cars. And in this watch, you can see these influences that perfectly blend, in my opinion, cars, planes, and adventure. Well, I have to admit that when design overshadows function, it usually, I usually lose interest in, in the watch. But in this case, the design is very, well, uh, is very well aligned with the functionality of the watch. And if there's some concession towards design, it's very minimal, and I will explain. The design carefully follows the watch expected functionality, only foregoing the sleek elegance found in other brands' models, which seems right if something had to be sacrificed. In this sense, I think this watch is more honest, as an adventure and travel watch despite its size. For instance, it has some features like the twisted lugs, or the engraving on the case back. This engraving, by the way, even though it's fairly sharp, is not only not uncomfortable, but also allows the skin to breathe. Still, every now and then you will have to clean it. In any case, the awesomeness of this watch is that, while it is an exploring watch, it doesn't immediately make you think of the Rolex Explorer 2 by Rolex, but it's its very own original thing. As you can see, the watch has a very original GMT hand, with a, it is skeletonized. The second hand is loom, everything is loom, well, not the bezel, the bezel is solid. The hour and minute hand painted in this special color that they decided to use in, in the watch. It gives a vintage vibe, but it's not similar to a uh, Fox Patina. It's, uh, it's just the color chosen for this watch. The bezel I will mention later, it has a radial brushing. The fonts are very coherent. The 12369 and the numbers in the bezel have the same font. The logo and the brand is very subtle. I think the dial is very well executed. It's flat, it's, it's painted. There's no applied hour markers, but it, this goes along with the vintage look of, of, of the watch. Also, the bezel has uh, this UFO shape. Everything is brushed. The sides are brushed, there are no polished sides. The light plays very nice with the bezel. The looks are short. The end links a little bit lower. They meet the twisted lugs in bottom part of the case of the watch. The bracelet, as I said, is, is a little bit sharp. You have all, all, the, all the specific details of the Jubilee style bracelet. It's uh, it's snappy to open and to close. Uh, you feel secure when, when closing the, the clasp. It has four micro adjustments and this latch to secure the, the bracelet so it will not fall off. The bracelet has quick release which is a great feature to have. Screw down case back and screw down crown allowing this 200 meters of water resistance the screw down crown is uh, also looks sturdy tough it's very precise it's very easy to thread it feels secure when you when you close it the operation is uh, rather smooth when you unscrew the crown you can wind it it feels solid it's a, a good wind in the first position of the crown, you can change the GMT hand in incremental positions without stopping the hour and minute hands. The next position, you can 
you hack the movement and you can set the time to whatever you want it to be. Then you screw it back. And the case, it doesn't have any crown guards. There is no crown guards, but still you, there is like a small space to fit the crown in it. So it doesn't feel insecure or that anything is going to damage the, the crown easily. But there are no, no, no crown guards. In any case, the watch feels solid all through, all the way. Oh, the, sorry, the glass, the um, sapphire glass is a little bit raised. It has like, I would say, 1, 1.2 millimeters. So the profile, it looks rather thin, to be honest. It doesn't feel, it doesn't seem to be that, that big. There is anti-reflective coating in the underside. It seems to be blue, but it's a very light blue. So there is uh, no, no complaint from me on that side. I'm very nitpicking with that. So overall, very nice selection and combination of design cues and very nice one. Now let's move into the positives, which I believe will explain better this watch. This is an excellent design, well balanced with its real function in mind. This is an adventure watch, no doubt there. The bezel with the radial brushing is simply spectacular. Of course, the GMT functionality is very practical and easy to read. Though there is one aspect I will have to address in the negatives. It has a clean symmetrical dial with no date. Uh, this will be also in the negatives. I like the balance, I am not that much concerned it doesn't have a date, but I recognize some people prefer their watches to have a date and it's quite logical given a GMT. What do you think about it? Loom color and hands. This color gives a vintage touch without being a fake patina. I love the color they have chosen. 200 meters of water resistance. Even though probably adds some volume and size to the case, it offers, you know, peace of mind. I say this because for technical reasons I had to use it for diving and I felt completely at ease thanks to this. Everything is brushed. This will hide scratches much better. For this type of adventure watch, this is a good, a good thing. It is very well proportioned at 40mm diameter, 13.6mm high, around 46.5mm lag to lag. It's not too big and wears quite well. It weights 148 grams with the bracelet adjusted for my seven and a quarter wrist and 159 grams with all the links. The case it comes in is small and gorgeous. Looks like a car park replacement. Very, you know, very Nesume Studios. I already mentioned this, but the bracelet has quick release and for micro adjustment. And the best part is that it fits my Squale Corso Italiano. Oh yeah. I was looking for a bracelet, for a metal bracelet for, for Masquale Italiano, it was really difficult to find one, and here I have one. Hey, that's great. Well, at least for me. It looks great and very adventurous with many different straps, whether they are leather, silk cloth, or even natos, though this increases its height. However, thicker straps work better than thinner ones. Well, the loom is decent, it lasts all the night, it does its job. All the hands have loom, which is great, even the second's hand. Though I will touch on the GMT hand in the negatives. The GMT hand's original design is easy to spot in any situation, except at night. The movement is a NH34, it deviates uh, about 3-4 seconds a day and looks like it's uh, quite robust. Now let's go into the negatives. As I mentioned, the bracelet is quite basic. It has uh, rather sharp edges, but it's wearable and serves uh, its purpose. It just doesn't exude much quality, even though the clasp, which is a snap-on, feels very secure. No drill lugs, which considering its vintage look would have been a nice touch. This is one of the design concessions that I mentioned. In this case, it would have been quite fitting 
having drill lugs to make it easier to swap straps. The second hand loom fades quickly, but that is a minor complaint. However, the GMT hour hand, having a very small amount of loom and only on the tip, hardly lasts a couple of minutes and it is almost impossible to see afterwards in the dark. I understand not wanting to apply too much loom in such a large hand, but it might have been better not to put any in the first place. However, considering there are many GMT hands possible to get for this movement, it wouldn't be difficult to change it in the future, although it would alter the original design greatly, so I wouldn't recommend to do this. If you want to be able to see the GMT hour in the, in the night, this is not your watch. The movement works great, as I said, but it has a bit error of around 1 millisecond. From what I have seen, this is relatively common in these mass-produced movements. If anyone has information on how this movement should perform, please let me know in the comments. This watch doesn't have a date, and maybe a GMT should always have a date. Uh, what do you think? I haven't missed it, but maybe should it have a date? Uh, leave a comment, I'm really curious about this. Uh, keep in mind that this is a Colors or, or Office GMT, it's not a Traveler's GMT. In a Traveler's GMT, I think it makes more sense, but in a Colors GMT, maybe it's not that important. At least, as I said, I haven't missed it. Now, to finish with the negatives, I have to mention that the lug holes are a bit too close to the case. There's not much space between the case and the spring bar. So much so that I sometimes have to use curved 20ml spring bars to put natos and some leather straps. Now for the elephant in the room. As you can tell by my words, this watch really grows on you. It's very masculine, well-proportionate, adventurous, tough. But is the Christopher Ward better? The Christopher Ward GNT better than this watch? Honestly, yes it is. But Will I sell this watch to get the Christopher Ward GMT? No, I will not. And let me explain. The Sealander is a watch that has almost everything you might need. Functional, elegant, versatile, of excellent quality, with a superior bracelet and movement, but also much more expensive. But for some reason, despite it all, I think it was way too similar to many of the other watches that I already have. The Aviera is a more unusual watch, I think more original, and it fits better with my current preferences. It is also a personal and a budget matter. The Sealander costs more than double. While the Aviera is around 500 euros, the Sealander is 1350. It is a big difference, honestly. And that's more important when we are talking about an adventure watch that we may destroy sometime, you know. For me, the main virtues of the Sealander are that it is thinner and elegant, while the Aviera is much more unique, unusual and adventurous. With the Aviera, I feel like I'm in, a, in the middle of an adventure every time I wear it. And what's more, and perhaps worse, it encourages me to embark on adventures. Oh, and that vessel with radial brushing, that has won me over. The Sealander is more a go-anywhere-do-anything watch focused on the elegant side of its nature, while the Aviera is, you know, go do adventures watch. <laughs> I am very happy with the, with the Aviera. I think it really fits what I wanted from a watch at this moment, at this stage. I have enough elegant watches, and, and this is, you know, this watch is cool. <laughs> what can I say? It's a cool watch. Can I recommend this watch? If you are looking for a sturdy, true, adventure, traveling watch that you're not going to use in very formal occasions, sure, it's a great, great watch. I really, I'm really liking it a lot. And of course, you can put different straps and change the appearance of the watch very easily. You can take it both to the sea, to the mountain. I only wish the watch was a bit thinner and that the GMT hand had a better loom but those are my pet peeves. And well, finally I can rest for a while in my search for GMT watches. I'll see you in another video, thank you very much.